In Rwanda, land has traditionally belonged to men, leaving women without land rights. This injustice is arguably one of Rwanda's biggest challenges. The 1994 genocide, which targeted men, created a large group of widows and orphaned girls who assumed responsibility for small family farms without having the right to own it. Without protection, they started to lose their land to distant male relatives legally allowed to take it over. This left women without any means to provide for themselves or their children. The government intervened, and in 1999, new inheritance laws gave women the right to own land for the very first time. However, almost 80% of women in rural areas do not know their rights. We come in to raise the voice of the voiceless, to see that their rights, as enshrined in the legal framework, are actually put into practice. Meet James Dale, a community leader working with the Rwandan Initiative for Sustainable Development, RASD. This grassroots organization promotes land rights for marginalized people. They work primarily in rural areas where many women have no knowledge of the law or might be too afraid to report a land dispute. Originally, women's land rights were not respected. Women had no rights. Rwanda is the most densely populated country in all of Africa. Scarcity of land coupled with its large population has resulted in an overwhelming amount of land disputes. The majority of these disputes are between husbands and wives as men have all the say in a family and even have the power to force women off their land. Women's land rights relate to even bigger social issues. Women's role in bringing out families is paramount. They are providing food for their families. If they have no rights, then the health conditions of their family is also threatened. If we look at poverty reduction, you must target women. Meet Annie Caraba, the director of RISD. The organization has been trying to find a way to settle land disputes without using the traditional court system. The bureaucracy in, in courts can, and, and corruption can be very stressful. There are cases which were left here in the 60s, and when people returned after the war, they found these cases still on after 30 years. RISD's solution was to create mediation committees. We train them, we develop materials for them that they use in mediation skills. These mediators, known as a bunzi, understand the nuances of their culture and have the trust of their local community, putting them in the perfect position to settle disputes. Historically, land has been passed on without any documentation. Therefore, the Ubunzi are also creating a public record of the property for the very first time. We wanted to meet people who'd gone through the mediation process and traveled to an area called Gikomero, just outside the capital city of Kigali. When everyone keeps talking about how densely populated Rwanda is, this is proving it right here. There's just plot after plot after plot. I mean, you can see tons of people working farmlands. Once we arrived, we were greeted by Dida Sien and Faustine, a couple on the brink of divorce when their mediation began. Okay, you see that fence over there? Yeah. Well, this is, uh, yeah, this is the field. Despite the law, men often force their wives off the land after a divorce. RISD local mediators heard about her case and stepped in. They educated the couple about the law and Dita Sien's right to the land. Because of the process, the couple were able to salvage their marriage. With the help of RISD, Dida Sien is now a full partner with her husband and proudly shows us their crops. Vegetables, tomatoes, potatoes, beans. Now she will be able to reap the benefits of her land. Positive changes from the mediation process can be observed all over Rwanda. The country is experiencing a boom within its agriculture sector, and Annie knows this is directly linked to women owning their land. Women are motivated today because they are not threatened. Rwanda is now ahead 
of other countries. This is because women have been empowered.